We got spring ball being played in Athens, Georgia. Dogs HQ, man, I'm going to say it. The best spot for you to stay tuned in to all things Georgia football, all things Georgia spring practice, tons of observation and notes, all the way to the nth degree over there with Rusty Mansell and company just crushing all the coverage. So get a membership over there. The leading story out of Athens so far during spring practice, because remember, it's only been a couple of practices. The leading story is they love what they've got in the transfer portal. Like Georgia's one of those places that use the portal more as a, you know, as a scalpel. They don't use it so much as a chainsaw. Like they'll go in and kind of just address some some small needs they have, maybe tinker with the roster just a little bit. But it's not a thing where you see Georgia take like 20 guys through the portal and overhaul the roster. Had a couple of needs at the wide receiver position, and they feel like they hit a home run with Colby Young, who transferred from Miami over to Athens during that uh, that first portal window, obviously by him being able to go through spring practice right now. The thing with him is he's just a different kind of player than they've had at the wide receiver position in a minute there, just from his size alone. Like he's, he's listed at 6'3", 215. Feel like he plays even bigger than that when you watch him at Miami. Had it north of uh, 40 catches for them last year, almost 50, 47 receptions, five touchdowns. He's going to be a, a dude for them. I truly believe that. You add that to Carson Beck's second season with Mike Bobo, and on top of what they have in addition to the transfer portal hall with, with uh, Colby Young, they got Trevor Etienne from Florida, who's a stud back for them. They got London Humphreys from Vanderbilt, who's right down the road from where we're recording this show. Georgia feels like they hit in the transfer portal with Colby Young, as well as the rest of these guys that are practicing right now. And uh, I, I'm going to go back to what I was just saying a second ago. If you give Carson Beck more tools to be successful his second year in the system with Mike Bobo, I think you're going to see his numbers continue to improve. I think we'll see him push the ball downfield even more this season by nature of him being more comfortable and by nature of him having guys like Colby Young to go up and get it for him. You're replacing Brock Bowers. You're replacing Ladd McConkey. It's not an easy task to do, but uh, Colby Young, they feel confident about where he stands right now. So for Georgia, man, again, the way they use the portal, it's not going to be this massive overhaul of getting a bunch more talent. You, the, the reason why Georgia doesn't have to go to the portal as heavily as some other teams because the guy that was on scout team for them a season ago was probably a four- or five-star cat and is now running with the ones or the twos. So you don't have to go and acquire in the portal what you can kind of just develop in your backyard. So Georgia, they love where they stand right now in spring practice, and we'll obviously have more notes for you as we get more intel out of Athens. Let's go out to the 40 acres in Austin, Texas. Inside Texas, the best source for all things Texas all year long. Uh, that's the On3 fan site. Go and get dialed in over there. Tremendous intel from Joe Cook and the gang. Uh, the, the practice that they had yesterday, or the, the only practice they've had so far, there's not a ton of massive notes, but I think the one thing you're going to always hear, as long as there's a quarterback on that roster with the last name Manning, is watching that pecking order and seeing if there's any shift during practice. What I was told is that it's Quinn Ewers, and then it's Arch Manning. And that was the order they went in every single rep through team, through throwing routes on air. Like That, that was how they operated with uh, the quarterback rotation, more or less. Not really rotation. It's sort of a pecking order with Quinn Ewers being the guy there in Austin. Now, we love Arch Manning. We think he's going to be really good for a long time. But I wholeheartedly believe that he will – have to wait his turn behind Quinn Ewers. I think Quinn Ewers is set to have a really great season after another year in Steve Sarkeesian's system. And they also said that Quinn Ewers was the one who is continuing to step into that leadership role. And he stepped into that last year. I think we all saw that. But for Quinn Ewers and the way that he's now really kind of an older guy of sorts in Austin, broke down the team doing their, you know, their, their jumping jacks during calisthenics. He was the one who counted them off and broke down the team. Like he's the leader from a position standpoint being the starting quarterback but he's a leader also vocally right now in Austin so it's not massive news but if there was anything different there if I had reported or, or told you hey Arch Manning's kind of taking reps with the ones as well as the you know like if there was a story like that we'd talk about it but that's not the case it's Quinn Ewer's team as of right now in spring practice Trey Wisner is running with the threes at the running back position the reason why I mentioned Trey Wisner is because you got a, a pretty solid stable of backs between uh, Jaden Blue and C.J. Baxter. But Trey Wisner is a guy who I think is going to see the field. Now, this isn't saying he's, he's got this carved-out role already, but he's one of those guys, man, that he can catch the ball for you out of the backfield. I got to cover him in high school over at Waco Connolly before he transferred over to DeSoto. Dude can go, all right? He is a, 
He's a special player with the ball in his hands. Team loves him. Staff loves him. Keep an eye on Trey Wiser and how he trends during the spring. I'm excited to watch his progress. And then the wide receiver room. Interesting note here. Isaiah Bond, transfer over from Bama. Matthew Golden, transfer over from Houston. And then Jonte Cook, who is obviously a freshman last year, saw some action, but I think will have a larger role this upcoming year. They're lining that, those guys up all over the field at this point in time. Last year, you kind of had an expectation of, okay, you'll probably see Xavier Worthy playing this position. You'll see Adonai Mitchell out wide. Like These are guys that they feel, at this point in time at least, pretty confident lining up all over the field. And the reason why that's significant, when you can move Isaiah Bond out wide or have him in the slot or have Matthew Golden in the slot or have him wherever you want, the reason why that's significant, when you can move pieces around on your offense, you then get to pick your matchup against the defense. Because if I got Isaiah Bond out wide, it's him versus a corner. Pretty straightforward. Now, corners, obviously, their job is to cover. That's what they're best at. But we put Isaiah Bond in the slot, well, then you either have to put a corner in the slot, you have to put a nickel on him, you got to put a safety down there. If you're really having a bad day, maybe somehow you put a linebacker on him, and that's probably a loss either way you slice it. But being able to pick your matchup gives more opportunity for your players to win that matchup if you're getting the matchup that you like and gives Queen Ewers more opportunity to slice and dice and Steve Sarkeesian to just be the offensive mastermind that he is. Defensively, I try and tread lightly when it comes to the, the early intel on, on the defensive side of the ball, just across spring practice in those first couple of practices because you're not really hitting. You're definitely not hitting the first practice, so you're kind of just using the eye test. The early notes out of spring ball in Austin is that Jade Barron is being moved around that defense. Last year, I believe he played primarily in just one spot for them. They're going to move him around and allow him to showcase his skill set. So Jade Barron, we'll see where he ends up when they start hitting people, but so far so good uh, with one practice under the belt on the 40 acres. One more note I want to give you on Texas. Steve Sarkeesian and the way that he operates – is very much so, the last couple of years at least, is trying to push the standard up here and set this standard, set the culture, set the temperature. And the folks that I talked to yesterday about that, um, I asked them like, hey, what's, what's the feel right now in spring practice as it relates to Steve Sarkeesian? And they said, yeah, he's still intense. He still obviously has a way of doing things, but it felt like it was a more understanding across the board within that team of what's expected. Like, he's not having to continue to push the bar up. He's trying to keep the bar where it is from a culture's perspective and a temperature perspective and a standard perspective. But he's not trying to raise it anymore to where, you know, they expect it to be. Because I think before it was, hey, this is how we need to do things to win ball games, And now it's more so a thing of, okay, this is what it's going to take to win ball games. But you already know that. So I think the understanding across the board might make for a... I don't know if more composed is the right word, but maybe just a more confident outfit across the board out there on the 40 acres. So spring ball is here. We're just living off of the intel from both these message boards. Again, Dogs HQ for all the Georgia intel. Inside Texas for all the Texas intel. Get a membership there. I promise you it's well worth every single penny you're going to spend uh, getting all the, the information over at those phenomenal sites under the On3 umbrella. Hey y'all, thanks so much for watching. Subscribe to the channel here to make sure you don't miss an episode of The Hard Count. Also be sure to check out other videos on the On3 YouTube channel.